since it's winter in Indiana, I can't do this, this, or this. So I'm doing this. Come on, spring. Firebird fix video I am replacing the plastic coolant overflow tank that I put in the hatch area of my car with a stainless steel tank uh, in the engine bay next to the coolant expansion tank. Uh, now it's very important to have a uh, overflow tank because it's you know it's required by the NHRA for any uh, drag racing vehicle because you do not want coolant uh, or water to uh, get onto the racing surface and potentially under your tires. I had misrouted a uh, coolant hose for my uh, steam vent kit trying to get it to uh, work properly which ended up being a mistake. In this pass at Muncie Dragway I uh, ended up leaving some coolant about the first 50 feet of my launch uh, according to the track guy that to let me know and thankfully he was nice about it and uh, I realized then that I had my uh, steam vent line routed the wrong way I was trying something you know out and it obviously didn't work but I have since remedied that with the correct uh, routing the correct steam vent routing begins with a motion raceworks steam vent kit here under the intake and it travels around to right here and mounts into the upper radiator hose. The 2022 NHRA rulebook is available for uh, download and viewing on the internet and if you go to General Regulations 1.7 uh, section 21 page 8 you will see the uh, requirement for a liquid overflow uh, container and here is the exact verbiage. All cars in competition with any type of water overflow capable of spilling water must have a catch can or degas tank to accumulate the excess liquids and prevent leaking onto the track. Minimum catch can capacity is one pint. Catch can must be securely fastened, i.e. bolted and clamped. Overflow may be routed into headers on cars that are supercharged or burn nitromethane or alcohol. In reviewing the 2022 IHRA rulebook, their general guidelines only state that uh, antifreeze and glycol is prohibited. Since I run antifreeze, uh, that is something I'm going to have to address. The stainless steel catch can that I am installing is 20 ounces, and the requirement is one pint, which equals 16 ounces, so we are good to go. So I ordered this universal overflow tank on Amazon and my uh, intentions are to replace the plastic tank that I mounted in the rear of the car due to its size. I, it was too big to put underneath the uh, hood and the engine bay. I didn't have a spot for it that wasn't anything, you know, close to anything hot. So uh, I bought this smaller stainless steel unit and uh, I'm going to put it up front right next to the uh, uh, expansion tank. So let's get her open here and see what we've got. It's just a universal China made one unfortunately. This is the first time seeing it as I'm videoing this. Very nice. Very nice. That seems to be a little cheap. The uh, 
Handle's loose. That's nice. <laughs> um, but I think it'll work exactly like I need it. There's some hardware that come with it. And I'm assuming a basic uh, set of instructions, which that doesn't apply to the one I bought. Nevertheless. I went through my bucket of uh, scrap metal and pulled out this piece right here. It's in my vise, and I'm going to cut it down and make a mounting bracket. There a little closer to the shape I need. So I've got my bracket cut to shape and I've clamped it temporarily in place and I'm going to uh, test fit it down here in the in the hole and that looks pretty good. So let's uh, let's get some holes drilled. Now I'm going to get some holes drilled. I love when I get to fabricate. It's so uh, relaxing and now I will uh, drill the other mounting holes to mount to the uh, inner fender well later. Where the bracket's going to fall once it's bolted onto here. That way I know where to put the mounting holes, excuse me, that go on the inner fairway. And we will, uh, I know it came with locks, bolts, didn't it? Lock. Okay. Then let it work. some more trimming on my bracket um, for aesthetics and for placement.
start back on the can. Let's try not to drop it. Blocking your view, but I am drilling the mounting holes into the uh, front of the inner fender well. I'm going to bolt this into position so I can uh, mark and drill the bottom hole for this mount to the inner fender well. I didn't think I'd be able to get my hand in there, but I did. Now, we will put it in position. Oh, come on now. Drill the bottom hole now. Time to paint it. I'm using Rust Oleum Gloss White Enamel Spray Paint. Let's uh, speed up this process of the paint because it's only like 30 degrees out and I don't have the heat on in the garage yet. So let's uh, use the old heat gun. There's a shot of the mounting holes drilled for the bracket and my pencil mark to show me where the alignment was. It looks a little odd like that, but it looks good when it's bolted down. 
Um, using the heat gun on this actually did help when it cooled off the paint was dry and wasn't sticky and wet as you saw when I touched it. Uh, now I've got it all painted and I've got the heat on here in the garage there in the corner right up there. Got the door shut so I'm in the small portion of my garage a little workshop area I guess you could say and we're gonna let that dry and mount her up later. The uh, upper barber fitting that came with the uh, tank uh, is too large for the hose I am running so I got into my stash and I, I had a brass one that will uh, work just fine. As part of my Firebird Fix uh, series I will uh, give a real rough explanation of how the uh, cooling system works and what components are uh, there and, and why they are there. So first of all you have the, uh, the radiator on the uh, left of your screen, the large rectangle, then to the to the right of that would be the expansion tank and then as the as the car is running um, and it warms up the coolant will expand and will uh, be forced into the expansion tank and then when you shut the car off and it cools off it will draw it back into the radiator and then to the uh, right of the expansion tank we have the overflow tank and now the purpose of this thing is in the event that the uh, car gets too hot and the uh, coolant expands and fills up the expansion tank until the uh, point of no return it's got to go somewhere and rather than spit it out onto the track or any whatever surface you're on road you know your yard your driveway whatever um, it will go into the, the overflow tank and then after the car has safely cooled down and at a later date you can uh, open the pet cock at the bottom of the, the overflow tank and uh, drain the coolant out. Alright, now we're ready to uh, bolt our bracket on and then bolt our uh, overflow tank on. I don't know why this worked, but it did. The nut was a 10 millimeter, and the hex head was a 532nd. So it's a mixture of metric and standard, but it worked. Better if I use a ratchet wrench. That nice little spike.
Well, I'm really happy with how this turned out. You can see my bracket down there. All painted and pretty. Now I just need to remove the uh, rubber hose that goes to the back of the car to the plastic tank and I can pull the plastic tank out too. Alright, time to get down with my bad self. And... What did I just say? Alright, time to get down with my bad self. I really have no idea why I just said that. Cut this. Coolant line that I ran back to the tank in the back. Cut it away. It's just get zip tied to the dump brain connector. Okay, well I can't see anything. I got so much room in here. As I uh, cut the cable ties off and pulled the rubber hose out, there was some residual coolant still in the line that uh, I had to clean up. Spoiler tethers. The spoiler tethers hold the strut hardware for the rear wing, so when I want to pop the hatch open and I pull the hardware out, I won't lose the hardware because it's uh, it's attached to the wing. found the spoiler tethers on Amazon. This plastic tank can come out once I finish removing the drain line that attaches to it. Now that guy's all taken out. Now this tank here in the front that I've mounted in this video will take the place of that one that was formerly in the hatch. A list of tools used would include the safety shield, first and foremost, a hammer and punch, 
a heat gun, a grinder that I used with a cutoff wheel, and a grinder that I used with a flap wheel, uh, a drill, a 532nd hex key, a 10 millimeter wrench, and a pair of side cuts. That's going to wrap up this uh, Firebird fix. I hope you got your Firebird fix by watching my video. Thank <laughs> you.